Let's talk GM quality for a second here, or perhaps the lack thereof. And now, our feature presentation. So when you open the hood slash bonnet of any third gen Firebird or Camaro, for those of you who are not in the know, the third generation Firebirds and Camaros are the exact same car, minus a couple of little differences here and there in the styling. But, uh, you know, the engines are the same. You can mix and match pretty much everything from both cars. And other than, like I said, some styling differences, they are more or less the same car. So when you pop that hood, open that bonnet, one of the things that catches your eye straight away are the two white containers, one on each side. One of them, of course, is your expansion, radiator expansion tank, which is an integral part of the cooling system. The other one on the other side is for your window washer fluid. Now, I originally replaced this with a brand new OER part, which is, you know, a pretty popular aftermarket brand of OEM replacement parts. But that didn't seem to help. This thing cracked again. I mean, it's just junk. I've been having a lot of issues, I'll be honest, when I buy new parts for this car because I've replaced a whole bunch of new things and the new parts actually being faulty or breaking very quickly. I've been quite disappointed. For instance, I bought a brand new distributor for this car right in the beginning because remember the old one was so crusty and disgusting that it just wasn't viable to keep it anymore. It was just all rusted up and I didn't want to risk being stranded somewhere. Well, guess what? bought a brand new one it was pretty expensive it was the correct replacement OEM one I put it in there everything was running fine and the car just died on me luckily it was when I was leaving my garage because if it, if it had happened out there in the wilderness who knows what could have happened to me I could have been beset by bandits from the mountains or something like that who knows but the thing is it died and I couldn't figure out what it was and in my mind there's no way it could have been any of the new parts that I bought so I ended up buying a new coil because I wasn't getting sparks so I followed everything I thought it might be the coil I thought it might be the PCM I thought it might be um, you know various things but definitely not my brand new distributor so I went through and replaced a whole bunch of unnecessary parts you know the whole parts cannon loaded that up and fired it at the thing and turns out it was the new distributor in fact it was the ignition control module inside of the new distributor that was broken and the only way I could figure this out is by eliminating every other possible cause and to make matters even worse the car had been running fine with the new distributor and ignition control module for about a month before it just died so you know it made it even harder to diagnose I thought you know what what the hell let me just replace the ignition control module because you can buy them separately it came with the new distributor but I bought a uh, separate one put it in guess what the car worked Ugh. Anyway, in this episode, I'm going to show you how I decided to, after much frustration, replace the expansion tank in the car. That big, kind of ugly, unsightly white expansion tank on the side there. And I got a very nice little aluminium, or as you guys might say, aluminium, replacement for it. And I'm very happy with it. It's definitely an upgrade. I absolutely love this kind of upgrade because... Not only is this thing smaller and gives you a little bit more room under the hood there, but it's so much better, you know, it's made out of such better materials, it mounts nicer. I had to drill an extra hole, of course, to mount it correctly, but it was incredibly easy and straightforward to do all of this. And I did away with this junk, plastic nonsense that just kept failing on me. I just don't understand why these things aren't better built. I mean, it's a brand new replacement part and it was leaking and causing all sorts of crap. It gave me an opportunity to clean underneath all of that, but you know, this constant leaking had led to some minor corrosion and stuff, especially around the battery box. And this was very frustrating, but I got under there with some rust converter and so on and managed to clean all that up. But it's one of those little upgrades as you go, incremental upgrades that actually do improve the car. And that's the thing with these old GM cars is, let's be honest, they were built badly. They were built using cheap junk parts and I know a lot of people, you know, have very fond memories of these cars, me included. I'm an outsider, but, you know, I love these cars. But people tend to think that they were better built than they really were, you know? Like, I was driving the other day and I pulled up at the light and a guy from a, a truck kind of yelled out the window, Hey, uh, you know, what year is that? And I told him, oh, it's a 1990 Firebird. And he's like, oh man, they don't make them like they used to. And he drove off in his new Ford truck. And I was thinking to myself, you know what, you're right. They don't make them like they used to. They make them so much better these days because cars from this era, especially this kind of mid to late 80s era, are 
awful when it comes to quality. But that's part of the fun of owning these things, I'm not going to lie, is the fact that you can upgrade them. You can take this kind of very cool, very stylish, it's got a very specific feel, these kind of cars. You can take these cars and you can basically build them into your own thing. You can choose the direction you want to go. Do you want this thing to handle really well? Do you want it to be more powerful? Do you want it to look cooler? And once you've planned the direction you want your car to go in, you can start to really improve everything. You pretty much end up replacing anything of real importance anyway. So for instance, I've already replaced a whole bunch of the suspension on this thing. All the little bits that are broken and the little knickknacks around the car that get damaged, I go ahead and I get something better next time to replace it with. So it's fun. It's kind of like if you were a kid who liked to play with Lego or Meccano sets, things like that, you can really relive that joy, childhood joy of messing around with this stuff except on a life-sized car. It's super fun. So although I constantly knock the quality of these old GM cars, and I have every right to because they're junk, I at the same time wouldn't have it any other way and I wouldn't choose any other car to own. I hope you've enjoyed this quick little look at some of the junk I had to replace that was new anyway on the car. Can't wait to see you in the next one. We'll be having a big update on the 78 Trans Am soon. And, well, we've got a couple of surprises that I just haven't been able to tell you guys about yet. But if you do check out our Patreon, you'll probably get wind of some of this stuff earlier. Uh, links down in the description. Until next time, you know the drill. Keep it between the ditches. Do not, whatever you do, ship your car to a small island where there's nowhere to drive and just have it there as an ornament, because that'd be stupid. And I'll see you next time.